Hello bearded bee people. Welcome back to B&K Bees for another episode of our beekeeping crash course. Uh, today we have the wonderful fun topic of honeybee diseases uh, to talk about. And this is an important topic to talk and converse over and uh, you know you should definitely be mindful of the various common diseases that you should look out for and be aware of what you should do if you do see signs of them. So let's get started. Firstly, we'll talk about a couple brood diseases. The biggest and uh, most fearful of them all, first we'll talk about American fowl brood. <clears throat> American fowl brood is a spore-borne bacterial disease. So what that means is it's transferred by spores, and these spores are essentially extremophiles. They can stay effective in transmitting American fowl brood through extreme heat and extreme cold and through you know extended periods of time. So for that reason, when an American fowl brood infection happens, the course of action, the solution is unfortunately to destroy everything, to, to immolate the hive, burn absolutely everything, because that is the only way to make sure that those spores don't get transferred to other hives. Now thankfully this is a rare disease. I've never seen it knock on wood. Um, I know a couple of people who have seen it one or two times, but this is not a common thing. It is, however, a thing you should be aware of because if it does happen, it's on you to stop it from spreading. And <clears throat> obviously right now, you know, we talk a lot about spreading diseases uh, amongst humans, but this is one of the most damaging and effectively spread diseases amongst bees. So if you see anything that looks like it, definitely call a mentor, call somebody who knows exactly what they're doing and take care of it very swiftly. <clears throat> so, this uh, spore-borne bacterial disease, uh, it is not related to mites, it's not related to bad management, it's just a factor of whether they came in contact with these spores. So what American fowl brood does is uh, when the, the infection spreads throughout the hive, it kills the larvae before they pupate, and they turn into a sticky liquid goo. Um, and so sometimes the signs of American fowl brood can look a lot like European fowl brood and also look a lot like parasitic mite syndrome. So one uh, very effective test, if you're trying to figure out which of those three you're looking at, is the stick test. I've got a slide that shows that here in a second. But what that essentially is, is you're putting a stick or a toothpick in the goo and if it comes up, if it's sticky like mozzarella cheese, obviously it doesn't look and, and smell like mozzarella cheese, but if it acts like that and sticks to the stick as you pull it out of the cell, um, that's likely American fowl brood and that is a bad, bad sign. That's a bad thing to have. So contact somebody immediately and likely you're unfortunately going to end up having to ruin your entire hive. So here is a picture of that stick test. You can see the ropiness of the, of the goo as it's being pulled out of the cell. Once again, it's not something I've ever seen. It's not something I want to see, but it's important to know what it looks like. Okay, now European fowl brood is another brood disease. It's another bacteria-based brood disease. But just because it sounds sort of like it's American cousin, doesn't mean it's anything in terms of as serious. Uh, so European fowl brood as opposed to American fowl brood, it should be considered something more like the common cold, something that the bees get fairly regularly but can deal with usually pretty effectively. Uh, signs of European fowl brood are initially yellowish or orangish brood food. So the royal jelly that should be uh, pure white will turn a yellow or orange color as it's being uh, filled with this bacteria. And then as this bacteria affects the larvae in the hive, they will die and twist into what's called the stomach ache position. I think I have a slide here next that'll show that stomach ache position. But what that looks like is a dead larva that is just twisted and it comes to a point up at the top. Um, it's pretty obvious that it's not what it should look like, and so uh, it's not something that's necessarily difficult to spot. It does, however, look quite a lot like parasitic mite syndrome. Um, so in most cases, an actual EFB test is advisable. Um, but generally, like I said, it's more akin to the common cold and can be treated without any types of antibiotics. Um, so if you do 
uh, suspect you have an EFB case, the first thing I tell you to do is to feed some fresh syrup. The influx of bacteria-free nutrition can help to sort of rid the colony of that bacteria. And then also you should remove any affected frames. Remove them and throw them away. Frames are cheap, they'll draw that comb very quickly. Uh, so if the issue persists after that, you can consider requeening. Uh, if it's a very bad issue and it looks like it's going to take your colony out, purchase a European fowl brood test. It's a very simple test where you basically mix some larvae with some water and drop it on a little tester and it'll tell you within a couple of seconds if you have EFB or not. If you do and it is an advanced case of EFB, you can contact a veterinarian uh, to get you an antibiotic called teramycin that you can dust over the tops of the frames and that will uh, help to rid that colony of that infection uh, pretty quickly. But like I said, once again, don't worry too much about EFB. Uh, you know, it's, it's something you're probably going to see in your beekeeping career. It's something that's probably going to clear up on its own. Um, but yeah, so it's not, not as crazy as, as its American cousin. So here is the picture of uh, some stomach ache position larvae and some bacteria filled yellowish brood food. You can see the pretty obvious difference between, you know, some of the other slides that I've had earlier in the crash course showing uh, healthy larvae and these yellowish twisted oddly shaped ones. Okay, so now on to some lesser uh, important diseases. Uh, chalk brood. Chalk brood is another brood disease that uh, is not so much of a concern for me. I see it a lot in the spring. I definitely see it more in hives that are shaded more than hives that are in the sun. But what chalk brood is, is an uh, infection of some fungus that sort of turns, it kills the brood and uh, turns it into what looks like a chalky mummy. And so the signs of that will be those chalky mummies inside the cells, but also usually you'll see them outside the hive, either on the baseboard or on the ground in front of the hive. Uh, the fix for this is fairly similar to European fowl brood. Free, feed them some fresh syrup remove any affected frames, and just wait for it to clear itself out. Sac brood. Uh, this is the last, I think, virus or uh, brood disease that we will talk about. This one is a viral disease, and it sounds horrific because what happens is the larva, uh, is, the larva dies before it pupates, and the insides all turn to this gross virus goo and the outside is like a yellow or tan sack. So that's why they call it a, a sack because it's essentially a sack of goo. Um, this is pretty easily dealt with by the bees. So the same sort of thing uh, that I recommend for all of the other ones. Feed them some fresh syrup, remove any affected frames, and just wait for it to clear up. All right, now nosema. This is a commonly misunderstood disease. Um, so, so there are two different types of nosema uh, that cause our bees issue. Nosema apis and nosema serrani. Now nosema apis is the type that is uh, that our bees are used to and that we have spent many many years learning the signs of and generally the signs of nosema apis are extended or excessive dysentery. So you'll see it on the insides of the hive and it'll paint all the outsides of the hive. Um, so that's a pretty easy and obvious sign that something had gone wrong. But the problem is that now most Nosema apis has been replaced with Nosema serrani, which is the Asian honeybee version of Nosema. And the problem with that is that it does the same things. It shortens these bees' lifespans. It makes these bees have an inability to feed brood food to the young, which makes them graduate to forager duty early, reduces their lifespan. It, it just generally weakens the strength of the hive. The problem, though, is that dysentery is not a sign of Nosema serrani. And so, once again, Nosema serrani is much more widespread now. 
And so we can no longer use dysentery as a sign of nosema. Now the only way to diagnose a nosema infection or to find out the level of nosema that you have in your hive is through a lab test or through a careful microscope inspection. So most of us don't have that ability. And so my advice to you in terms of nosema is to propagate your healthy hives. If you think that any hive is sick, you know, remove affected frames, you, you feed fresh syrup, but try to keep healthy hives, propagate healthy hives and cull the dead ones that just won't grow and just won't build up because those are likely the ones that are dealing with this almost invisible disease. Okay, so another one is CBPV, or chronic bee paralysis virus. This is a sad one to see. Uh, these bees will lose all of their hair and they'll look greasy and they'll be maladroit and they'll have an inability to fly. Uh, it's really sad to see, like I said, you'll see these bees on the fronts of the hive trying to get back in, but they won't have an ability to. And a neat aspect of honeybees in their hygienic uh, consciousness is that they won't allow, obviously, infected bees back in the hive. Once again, it makes a sad sight, but it keeps our bees largely free of this virus. So if you see CBPV, try not to worry about it too much. Uh, the bees are likely to keep that from growing into a super bad issue. Uh, if you do have an issue that just won't go away, uh, or consider requeening and feed them some fresh, clean syrup. Okay, and then uh, lastly, we have parasitic mite syndrome, which looks a lot like a, a lot of the earlier diseases we talked about, but is not really, in fact, a disease at all. It's just a sign of a bad mite infestation. Uh, and so you'll see really patchy brood, you'll see sunken brood cappings, and like, bald brood where they're moving out pupae and um, it, it can just look like a really really crappy disease infested situation and likely there are other diseases that came along with that high mite load but generally when you're looking at a uh, PMS situation um, it's just the direct effects of the mites uh, feeding on these larvae and adult bees. And so obviously the best method for dealing with this is to always maintain a low mite and disease load and to do that you check your mite loads every single month and treat over two percent treat, treat any mite load that exceeds two percent all right and that is it uh, next up we have the most important video that I could possibly come out with in this crash course and that is on varroa mite management so please stay tuned for that but uh, otherwise thanks very much for watching I hope you're digging it get out there and have some fun with your bees see ya